I don't think I have ever gone from so optimistically excited to just dead inside so quickly in my life. Strap in, ladies and gentlemen, that this one, this one is, is just, well, you'll see. Before we do get started, however, I do need to address what I feel is the uh, elephant in the room, or in this case, uh, the bird. Normally, I don't address my artwork uh, that I have for the, uh, the, 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 I don't know, on screen, but like, this is a case where it's like, it's purposefully done bad, but it's not obvious if it's purposefully done bad because it's also traced i i just want to express that so that it, it's not like in the back of your head during the whole video i'm probably just wasting my breath and your time so i apologize for that um but i promise it will make sense as to why i decided to do this all right cool that's out of the way moving on so if you remember from the last, whatever, I I was dealing with some uh, uh, some plasma grunts that decided to uh, give me the cold shoulder, and that's the end of the uh, the video. Thank you for what uh, I failed to everything. Okay, I'm, I'm no, but like actually, I. I kick all the grunts' asses because they were pushovers, uh, and I don't know why they bother with an evil team in Pokemon when they're so easy to just, just wail on. Like, I get it, grunts are grunts, but at the same time, you gotta understand, like, this is just time wasters, if anything, uh, like, just experience excuses at best. So after all that, I now have to deal with uh, Zinzolin himself, the the big chungus. Uh, weirdly enough, he he's in like some sort of weird snowy coat. I don't know. Like, dude, this isn't Sinnoh, bro. Like, there's a desert like a few miles that way. It's it's, it's not that cold here. Isn't like the only cold place. In, in this region, like the the freezer, and I don't even think that's here anymore. So yeah, because uh, this guy didn't really have a chance to train in the last game, I kick his ass. I then get praised by that dragon gym leader guy who was, weirdly enough, standing in the same spot where Zinzolin was. Are they secretly the same person? Theory confirmed! Oh yeah, then he shows me the DNA splicers. And then the ninjas show up and, and steal them. Cool. Now, now I have to fight them. Uh, and I, I find one and I beat him up. Uh, but he wasn't the one that had it. So they escape with it. Uh, I then get a call from Bobby and Sharon. Okay. Um, I, so we're going after them. Because of course we are. I decided to teach Peacock Fly uh, to get there quicker. I was checking the map where to go, and it looks like the only way to get there is through the cave where I got Gold Duck. Uh, Bobby calls me again. He asks if I know how to get there, and without following up or hearing what I have to say, he hangs up. Fuck this kid. Uh, to make it through, I have to fight this guy uh, with four uh, rog and rolla. <laughs> Did somebody say Giga Drain? They die, and I win. Moving on. So I make it past, and I find a town with a board to put my face in, so I turn into a Jellicent. That's cute. It's whatever. Uh, it was at this point that I realized oh, I could get a new Pokemon from this new route that I just passed by and had repels on, so I didn't encounter anything yet. So I try to catch uh, a Pokemon within the Rippling Water, uh, because then I'll have a good chance of coming across a Namola Mola, uh, according to Bulbapedia. Uh, it doesn't state, however, anywhere that Route 21, 
that route that I currently find myself in could spawn Corsola at all. Yet here we are. I call it Secret Rare because that's that's basically what it is. It's just the Secret Rare in that pack of Pokemon cards. It's fucking Corsola, but you know, given the options, there were not many. So Bobby tells me to get my gym badge before we hunt down Team Plasma. Not the priority I expected, especially considering his motivations, but that just goes to show how stupid he is. Uh, I go running along the docks, and the gym leader jumps out of the water. Uh, guess this is what we're dealing with? Okay, cool. I gotta say, I really like this guy's laid-back personality. It's very chill, uh, it's very nice, and most importantly, very unassuming. I relate to this guy on a spiritual level, just not a moral one. I'm just gonna put it like that. I found a girl who said that her dress is comfy and easy to wear, and I don't want to shoot myself. I find a house with an old lady, and she asks me to walk with her Pokemon. And I didn't know how to feel about it. I don't know why, but she got mad when I tried looking at the trash can. Okay? I guess? She gave me her pearls, so I can't be that annoyed. I was able to find a Basculin, no, not that one, and caught it. Uh, I call him Crep. I don't know. I'm kind of burnt out on ideas at this point. I mean... Do you expect me to really do anything with this? I just caught a Corsola, and you're like, oh, yeah, you know, the Basculin could be a good alternative. Um, sure. The next route over, I caught a Pelipper and named it... Uh, I accidentally pressed the Enter button instead of Shift. So I guess its name was Pelipper. I should probably mention uh, the Basculin was caught in town. Apparently, you can find wild Pokemon there. Counts as a different route. Uh, Alright, now I'm going to take on the gym after like some grinding, obviously. Uh, I barely know the leader, but I, like again, that personality. He's just exuberating with, uh, with a lot of just, just laid-back attitude. Uh... Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that shit is a front. This man is the big deal. Also, can I just say, looking at his official art, I can't tell if he's brown with tan lines or has a borderline offensive tan. I'm, I don't want to read into that because I don't want to figure that out. Okay, so he sent in a Jellicent, so I try to have FNAF meme one-shot it. I knew it was a glass cannon, but I risked it anyway, because I figured oh, it would have been faster. I was wrong. It used ominous wind and got all of its stats boosted. I found that it has a citrus berry and uh, recover the move. Uh, they killed not with the same move and got the boosts again. They got doggo and backbone and just basically wiped out my entire team, including Hodor and Flutter. My strongest Pokemon died to this single monster. I don't know what the fuck just happened, but I just got completely wrecked by RNG with... It's basically... I'm fighting a water ghost type Ultra Necrozma boss. Like... Holy shit, dude! He just went single mode out of nowhere! So, fuck me, what do I do now? I'm left with two options. I can either, A, kill myself and just start over in general, 
Or B, make a new rule. So, uh, it's, it's not really a new rule. It's just kind of a uh, sort of a asterisk towards the original rule. So instead of losing all of my Pokemon, I'm going to have it be whenever I get a team wipe, then it restarts. I still get the check. It makes no difference. Because let's be honest, folks, I'm not going to waste your or my time by just purposefully making my entire box faint just for the sake of consistency. Sure, I keep more money than I would have, but do you care? Do you honestly care? I, I don't care. I am as invested in this playthrough as I'm willing to be. And I am invested enough to just restart myself. <laughs> Okay, well, that certainly happened. Alright, uh, the new restart begins! So this is the current team that I have, for at least the sake of taking on the gym. It's not the team, it's fuck this jealousent bitch team. We got Doggo, Backbone, Flutter, without another, but eh, what else is new? I got horses, sliver, and next to die. Like I said, th this team is not permanent. It's just purely meant to just fuck over this gym. I went through an underwater bridge. It was neat. I now see what Bobby uh, was trying to say by taking the long way. Uh, whoops. My bad. Who cares? So in that route where I caught Pelipper, uh, while doing some training, there's actually a cave there. So I go in that cave, and my first encounter is a Vanillish. And you know what? Like I'm actually okay with this. I don't really have an Ice type yet. Uh, and you know I know the Vanillish line gets a lot of hate from a lot of people, uh, even those who are fans of Gen Five. But honestly, I don't think. Uh, the vanilla line is that bad because if you think about it, its body is made completely out of snow and ice. This is our sentient snowman Pokemon, and everyone's taking it for granted. But no one's willing to look past the fact that it's just in the shape of ice cream. When in actuality, oh, I caught it in a quick ball. Cool. Uh, its name is is a snowman because that is what it is. So I evolved both Sliver and Next to Die, which. Very nice for me. And honestly, I'm switching out Sliver for not. I really just want to evolve him. I don't actually plan on using him ever at this point. He's so underleveled, it would not be worth it. Uh, also, without contrary, uh, Superior just kind of sucks. Uh, Alright, your boy's having a rematch after... By the way, I need to express, before I start this rematch, I went through... So much grinding. Making sure I am of the proper levels for the team across the board. And with some of them being underleveled, it took some time. Thankfully, uh, I discovered that purposefully hunting for Audino is actually the easiest way to level up, especially with a lucky egg. So, that went by quicker than I originally anticipated. So there's that. Yay. So, during this rematch, every attack is inflicting a status condition. Scold Burt my Tangro. Bounce Paralyzed Doggo. Twice in a row! The gods don't want me to win. They knocked out Not and got ominous wind boosts again! They one-shot next to die, which is not surprising, and Flutter, both hit with Ominous Wind, and once Flutter got hit, which, like, he got hit after next to die, he got the boost a second time, AGAIN! <laughs> <sighs> okay, so, Scald left 
backbone with 11 HP, but then got burnt and then died. Great, cool, wonderful. I didn't care. He crit killed Doggo. I am done. Oh my god. But you know what? I beat him. I beat him that match. And honestly, I don't think I should have. I beat him with horses in the back. Only horses in the back was left alive. And with barely any HP and a burn, it got to a point where if he recovered at all, which I knew that he could, I, w I would have lost. But for some reason, he didn't. And I do not care. Oh my god, what a fucking experience. I, I take back everything I said. This guy can go fuck himself. Oh my god! He gave me the badge. TM Skull. That, that's actually useful. Uh, and then just swims away as if nothing happened. <sighs> Bobby meets me outside with no time to chill. Cool. Alright. Yeah, so it's, it's just a hunt for you, you know what. Alright. This is currently the new team. Obviously, horse is in the back. You know, it's the only surviving member of like an actually properly leveled up team. Uh, we got Hodor, of course. We got Is a Snowman. It's actually two levels away from evolving, so there's that. Also, it's just a good bond in general. FNAF name, Power Tool, and Pelipper. <laughs> yeah, the team's looking pretty scattered looking right now. Not the best. It could be better, but honestly. I'll, at this point, I'm desperate for anything. <laughs> I lost everyone that was good. Ah! Although, to be fair, there was no overlapping types, and I approve of this. I had to go back to grinding just to get everyone else properly leveled up. Specifically Power Tool, because I have not touched him in a... Long ass time. Oh, and now he learned Earthquake and everything is now dead. <laughs> uh, is a snowman, also evolved. Uh, and there's a Terrakion in the wild. It's so weird. I've been grinding in this forest for a while. But I only just now saw him. After looking up, oh, I was told Terrakion should show up now. Where is he? He's in what route? That one. I go there and I'm like, well, well, where is he? And I actually bothered to look for him and I'm like, oh, he's right there. We're like right next to where I've been training this whole time. How did I miss him? Oh my god, the audio looks nuts. Alright, so now that this Terrakion is here, I am going to make many preparations in order to catch it. So, I have a game plan. Obviously, it's the same rules as last time, you know. Get one chance, uh, lose that chance, restart from the save point. As if nothing happened. I'm going to craft a team specifically to deal with him, mostly because I don't have not with Stun Spore anymore. So, that's going to hamper with my chances considerably. I'm going to get myself Flame On and Corpse Scarf. I evolved Corpse Scarf, uh, just in case, you know. Uh, I, I had two shiny stones anyway, so I could always save the other one for uh, the Roselia. I wanted to use Corpse Scarf specifically because it has Sing, so if I could put it to sleep, that would be very useful. Um, the only scary thing is that it does have a fighting move, so there is that. Uh, I also taught... Uh, Will o Wisp to Flame On, uh, just in case. These moves are not 
reliable completely, but, you know, it's something. <sighs> like, seeing as temporary, burn actually whittle, whittles away health, making it even more difficult. Um, but you know what? I, I'm also giving uh, Flash to Flame On, so it can lower its accuracy. I train up uh, enough so that Flame On specifically uh, can evolve. And then I use a Dusk Stone in order to evolve it even further beyond! Uh, and it was at this point that I found out that it's the last legendary I'll find before the end of the game. Including Kiram. So apparently, you don't get Kiram or Reshiram until post game. The one game I'm doing a Nuzlocke in, and I can't even get the broken legendary to help me out. I don't know how I feel about that. With this new information in mind, I'm just going to use the Master Ball. Yeah, I know, it's a cop-out, but you know what? It's a in-game programmed cop-out, so blame Game Freak, not me. So I run up to Terrakion, and oh, uh, Colrus is there, kind of ruining the mood. I was going to do this whole big thing, but whatever. He then gives me something, I don't know what it is. Eh. Now he's talking about some Pokemon at Seaside Cave on Route 21. I looked online and it seems to be a crystal. I might be inclined to get it down the line. Who knows? I fight Terrakion and try to get him in a quick ball, but it failed, obviously. Uh, so I just use the Master Ball. most underwhelming fight ever. I name him Ned. Uh, like, seriously, I just, I don't care. I just, I want, I just want this to be over. I'm gonna switch out Hodor. Uh, a rock for a rock, if you will. Fighting type now doubles up, but I, I don't care. Do you care? I don't care. It's just, hmm, what do I use? Uh, the defensive wall with questionable special defense that has mildly decent attack. Or a legendary Pokemon. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. Stone for stone. What is that what the meme was? I don't know. Wait, I think it was soul for soul? Who cares? I decide to go uh, for the crustal now because, you know, if it's an event trigger, it counts as, uh, it counts as new. And I got him <laughs> in a quick ball. Uh, I call him not a turtle. The machine broke, the entrance is open, and apparently that's where I was supposed to go? I thought it was in the other cave where I got the vanillite. A uh, vanillish? The vanillux now. Whatever. I thought I was supposed to... I thought it was... Because there were grunts down there, so I'm like, okay, that's where they are, that's where they want me to go. No. No, it's not. Uh... <laughs> Okay, so here's the question then. On the other side is where Team Plasma was hiding, but why did Colrus give me the means to find them? Why does he want us to find him? You would think it would be some sort of trap, because we don't even know. He's a bad guy yet. I I mean, I do. That's just because I'm a nerd. Does he want to be defeated? I I I, I don't I don't know. I don't I don't care anymore. So Bobby shows up behind me and is like, "Oh, how are we gonna get in there?" But then Marlin shows up and helps us out. He like brings, it opens up the ship or whatever. At first, it's like. Hey, thanks for helping us, and then he's like, don't misconstrue. I don't have anything against them. I just don't have anything for them either. But it's like, why are you helping us? You obviously have a side that you're picking. I don't understand what this guy's deal is. 
like, he's so chill, yet he's also a fucking nuke. Like, an actual fucking nuclear warhead. But then also in Pokemon Masters, he's not, his partner isn't even a Jellicent. Like, what the fuck is going on? In order to proceed, we need to find the password. Defeating grunts gives me hints. It took about two hints for me to realize exactly what the password was, because it's a dragon-type Pokemon that starts with the letter R. Gee, in this Generation 5 game, I can't imagine what Pokemon that could be. But I guess being able to input the password would have been too easy, because I also need a card. Okay, sure, fine. I find and defeat the person with the card. I also find someone else who blatantly state the Pokemon by name and show me images of them in the Pokedex. I come to the monitor, but need to manually type the password. God damn it, spelling! My one weakness! So I look up Rushyrum on Google Images and then just put in the password. Uh, now I can advance! I discover that they have Kirim and I've been using his power for the Ice Cannon. What a shock! Oh no, wait, th this one isn't where they have Zekrom. What a burn! I I wait, I'm not being dissed. What also, Bobby shows up, and I honestly forgot he was here. Like, I've been doing all of the work, and he's just been existing. We fight, uh, not me and Bobby, but we, we fight against, like, Sinzelin or whatever. Uh, we fight and then uh, get kicked off, so we don't know why we bother, but who cares? <laughs> the the ship goes flying off, so that was cool, I guess. Why the fuck did I write that? Like, I put cool in quotes. Like, why? Charon showed up! Cool. <laughs> Fucking, I didn't... I didn't even write that. I just accidentally said it. He says the only one who can stand up against Team Plasma at this point are the legendary dragons. Okay. Sure, that makes sense. <laughs> I go to the cave uh, they were blocking off from earlier. Apparently, there was some Team Plasma spy that is integral to the... the. I meant to write plot, but it autocorrected to plant. I, why do I even write scripts? I met him on the boat earlier, but he, he comes and play again in the cave. Okay, so the cave has an outside area. Considering it's technically the same area i will not count it as a different encounter chance uh deeper in the cave there's some uh, ongoing plasma drama rivalry bobby waited like two seconds before barging in the traitor rude gives me a max revive thanks i'm definitely going to need this according to him bobby's stolen pokemon is currently being held by one of the ninja guys how would he know? Why would he be more likely to... You know what? Never mind. The more I try to make sense, the less sense it makes. I make it back onto the ship. I believe this might be the home stretch. Ned survived a high jump kick from a Scrafty with 5 HP left. Oh my fucking god. After completing some stupid maze puzzle that took five minutes, I beat Zinzelin for what feels like the gabillionth time. I then find Colrus, just as expected. I'm now fighting him. Ned took another hit that left him from full HP down to nine. I think he has a built-in focus sash that he's not telling me about. I won! Time to save Kieran. Yay. Uh, also, for some reason, he's like, I don't know what goes on, but, like, Colrus is all, you defeated me. I'm not evil in it. Like, it's so weird. His whole thing is that he wants to, he's running experiments to find the full potential of Pokemon. So he was made leader of Team Plasma so that he could better have a chance of finding that, but because he saw my full potential giving love and compassion to Pokemon, he's all like, you know what? I'm not gonna be evil anymore. I guess that explains why in Sun and Moon he didn't really do anything. 
But even still, it's like, I don't know how much I'm willing to trust this guy. He he let all of this happen. I, I don't know. So now, I'm finally confronted with Getsis. I mean, you know, he was so prominent in the last game, and I don't see him until now. I guess that's ominous. Who cares? Like, that's the main theme of this episode. Who cares? Just let me get through this madness already. He lives. He lives. He leaves, and the ninjas show up, and Bobby is here shortly after. Uh, he's such a... I don't... Okay, so... Bobby... Get this. Bobby is reunited with the Purloin. Except it evolved, and now follows the ninja's command. Fucking wah wah. I defeated the ninjas, and Bobby doesn't know what to do. He's kind of in a state of shock. This is the most quiet I've ever seen him, and it's bliss. I found Getsis, and he uses Kirim to... Try and kill me. He's legit holding nothing back. Cool. And then, like the deus ex machina that he is, N shows up to save the day! Apparently, he was an orphan that lived in the woods before getting adopted by the G-Man. I, I guess it makes sense that he's not from any actual royalty, like the first game kind of alluded to, I think. I don't know. I guess it also why he has such an isolated view of humanity. Like, he hasn't really experienced any of this stuff. Again, makes sense. Glad it, it took me so many years to finally get that closure. A cutscene played where the Pokemon fight, and it was pretty epic. The Pokemon fuse, forming White Kirim! Now I have to fight him! I was scared, but Ned took him out in, like, two hits. Master Ball well spent. Turns out when you have a rock type fighting against a, uh, 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 an ice type who has fire type moves, works out pretty well. Now I have to fight the G in a battle. God damn. <sighs> okay. So. This guy is strong. His first Pokemon is a Cothagrigus with leftovers. He killed my Pelipper. This man is fighting like he has nothing to lose. He fights like how I expected his character to fight. Holding nothing back and just wanting to kill me. And... Oh my god, his Electros Oko's I Got Horses with Acrobatics? Alright, I didn't know that Mon got that move, but whatever. And, yeah, everyone else goes down. Another complete team wipe. Reset number three. Uh, you know... On the bright side, I got all my good guys back. Alright, this is the current team. We got the three horses, the dog, the ice cream, and power tool. At least for the fight. Like, having the, the horses all with me to fight against Getsis, thematically appropriate. And everyone else is just good and for coverage. I'm walking my way uh, back to the cave walking fast i don't know so I, I i find bobby is still there cool weirdly enough the rematch was a breeze i had a team that was pretty well prepared and i had uh, a little luck on my side he actually missed a few moves which would have been actually kind of detrimental <laughs> power tool survived a brick break from a toxic croak and one shot him with an earthquake. I looked out by flinching an Electros. Like, a lot of shit actually went my way for once. I kinda deserve it, so I'm not really complaining. 
So Getsus uh, refuses to accept defeat. And then N calls him father. I, I guess he was like a father figure. I don't know. Then they just take him away. Um, and N just flies off into the sunset. I, I, I guess everything's resolved then. Bobby shows up. Yeah, that's it with him. He accomplished what his character arc was set out to do. Uh, so now he's just become a nothing character. Seriously, I don't think he's gone through any arc or change. Like, meeting that Purloin would have, you would have thought, like, made him have a new perspective. But what? It's like, it's not the same as what he was looking for, but he still found it. And we later find that it's well adjusted to learning to care for Bobby again. So nothing was learned. His character is kind of wasted, and honestly, Jaren was better. On the way to Victory Road, and a new route in between. First encounter is a weasel caught. I call him Swiper, because fuck City of Gold. <laughs> I swear, all of my Pokemon are female. Like, I don't know why. Like, this one, everything, like, everything is female! I'm surrounded by bitches. Bitch. I'm I'm so tired of everything. I just, uh. so yeah. I make the, uh, to Victory Road and N is there and gives me waterfall and leaves. Cool. Whatever. M my first encounter there is a Golurk. I call it Band Aid. It's what he's got. So I'm finding some uh people there like one of the last trainers before the exit and doggo died to a crit from a stormy not the best time oh and uh pelipper died too uh, what a great comeback and now i got horses great just great dropping like flies from one fucking trainer random npc bullshit so i got some replacements uh flame on and flutter Flamon survived uh, a battle by burning a target and missing their next attack. I'm so fucking lucky. This game is a goddamn roller coaster. I'm near the end of the cave and I'm about to leave and then who else but Bobby shows up just to raid on my parade. Oh god, is it end of victory road time? Well, that just means a rival has to show up, doesn't it? Yay! Oh boy! Time to kick his ass one last time and be done with him. Thank God he only has four Pokemon. He doesn't even say hi. He just shows up and says, I'm going to battle you. Also, I forgot that um, Embor is a fighting type. So he took out Ned. Uh, whoops. Thankfully, he was a pushover overall. To show his thanks for helping him... Uh, on his journey, he gives me the TM Thunderbolt. I'm okay with that. Before he leaves, he very generically tells me, good luck. I know I shit on him all the time, but, you know, Bobby did right this time. Now, if only he didn't kill Ned. Choose to replace him with Nexadai, I think. I don't know. Like, honestly, right now, I'm at the Elite Four. Whatever team I'm choosing, I'm choosing to fight the team. I'm, I'm choosing to fight the Elite Four. Uh, so, next episode is the last one. I'm kind of scared. I don't know if I can do it. Because here's how I plan on it going down. I'm going to make a team. I'm going to use that team to fight the Elite Four. I'm going to train it up. I'm still going to go by Nuzlocke rules, obviously. I'm going to train them up. I'm going to do some grinding. If I lose, if I get a complete team wipe at the Elite Four, I consider it that I just lose the whole game. Not even just using replacement mons. That 
I just lose. That's it. I mean, obviously, of course, I'm going to try and beat them eventually, but, like, for the sake of this series, this is what it all comes down to. No resets, no tallies. Four strikes, you're out. It's a home run, baby. So, it all comes down to this. Ladies and gentlemen, we are officially in the end game now. And I will see you all next time. For the grand finale. I'm going to try and do something a little special for it. I'll see you then.